Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. So, this isn't really a tutorial, this is more of like a walkthrough of how I do it. So, the scramble is going to be on screen. I tried to choose a scramble that had as many, as many cool tricks as I could think of. So, um, yeah, let's just get started. So, right when I lift the cover and start memorizing, I'm going to look at this sticker right here. Because that's my buffer, uh, UFR. So, I'm going to, like, start seeing where this piece has to go. And this blue has to go to there, which has to go to there. And that, for me, would be N-O. So, no. And then... This would go to D, and then that would go to V. So, N-O-D-V. For corners, I memorize with images. So, I would make a mental image and memorize the corners that way. So, I have N-O-D-V. Which, so, if I was starting, I'd be thinking no driving. So, I'd imagine some guy sitting in a car and it wouldn't be moving because he wasn't driving. So the next part of my memo is going to be why he isn't driving or who isn't driving. So I can really like connect all of the um, corner memo together so it sticks. So N-O-D-V-G-Z-J. So I remember the gaze of anyone that starts with J. In this case, the first person that came to mind was Jura, which is a character in Fairy Tale. It can be anyone, Jay, John, really anyone you want. I just thought of Jura first because I don't know what my mind went to. So we got N O D V G Z R. So some guy isn't driving because of the gaze of Jura. So my image would be some guy sitting in a car that's not moving. And Jura would be in the passenger seat, glaring or gazing, gazing at the passenger. So that would be my corner memo. And um, something to note about the corner memo is that it had an odd amount of letters. It had seven, which means that I have parity. So if you have parity, you just need to keep that in mind when you start memorizing edges. And I will show you why. So my first um, few... Well, my buffer is DF. I'm planning to switch on UF soon, once I'm done with three style for corners. In the meantime, my buffer right now is DF. So I see that this goes to T, which goes to V, which goes to Y, which goes to U, which goes to L, which goes to M. And for edges, I use audio, which means I just make sounds with the letters. For example, TV is TIV. And then Y-U-L-M is Yom, so Tiv Yom. And then this is where that odd amount of corners kicks in is because parity is caused by uh, two pieces being swapped, I think. So since two pieces are swapped, that means that if we switch two pieces in our memorization, we will get an even amount of um edge targets because parity is caused by a two swap and two swap is odd and parity is odd so if you switch two edges in memo you should get an even amount of targets which is good because my like m2 you do that so if you do an m2 an odd amount of times the cube is going to be off by that but if you have an even it's going to be off by that which isn't off at all so you are going to want to switch any two edges on the cube in Memo. I personally, and what most people do, is they switch UF and UR. So I'm going to switch these two edges in Memo. And so if you remember, my last edge Memo was M. And so typically you'd think that M would go to E. But since I'm switching these two, it's actually going to go there to I. So the next part of my Memo would be I. And then I have a cycle break because that's my buffer. And I've only had seven targets so far, so I know that I'm going to have to like break to somewhere. So I have I, and I would just go to P because it doesn't really matter. And I know for a fact I haven't been to P yet. So I haven't been to P. I know I've been to, um, I know I've been to 
this one, which is what I typically go to, because I have M. I went M, I, so I know that's, I can't do that. So I just go to P, just because it's right there. So then you got I, P, S, R. See, that's red. You would think it would go to I, but we're switching it, so it actually goes to E. So you get S, R, E, P. And once I was done with that, I just look around for any flipped edges, and there are none. So then... I would blindfold myself because I have my memorizing, my memo all done. So now I would be blindfolded. And so I go, I start with my edges. So I would do TV and this is just normal M2 setup to U, to UB M2 undo setup. And then set up to V M2 undo setup. That's just typical M2. And it's still typical M2, because I do Y, U, and for U, I have to actually do C, because it's the second, um, it's the second pair, or second letter in my pair. That's just, that's M2 stuff. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial, this is just how I do it. So yeah, still typical M2 stuff, L, M. Uh... Remember, I actually go to I, not E, so I, P. And then S, R. Here's something that I do that's not actually M2. So I have E to P. And typically, you would do an algorithm for P, or for E, because E is not normal because it's in the M slice. So typically, you would do an algorithm for that. But it's kind of long and annoying and dumb. So I actually use this little trick that I learned. So I'm going to do E, E, P. You do this. M2, set up to P. M prime, undo set up to P. M prime. And that actually finishes off E and P. As you can see, remember this should be swapped. So now we have corners and... My edges are solved because remember I switched these two in memo and then all the others are solved. So I use a method called Orozco, which I will try to explain to my best. So my first two targets are N and O. And with old Pacman, you would just do N and then you would do O. Um, the most advanced method, which is called three style, well, not most advanced, but... The advanced version is three style, so you do N, O, and you do one commutator to solve both N and O. I use like an intermediate, you could call it, method, where I actually do two commutators to solve N and O. So, um, basically what I would do is I do N, B, and then B, O, and that actually solves N, O. So, for example, my the com for NB is this. And then the com for BO is this. So as you see, that actually did solve N and O with two commutators. And the reason you do that is because three style is a lot of memorizing, whereas the Rose Co. is a lot less. So it's a lot easier to learn and not as much on the brain. So that's why I'm on the intermediate step because I'm not good at blind yet. So I just use a Rose Co. to solve those two edges. So if you remember, my memo was some guy wasn't driving because Jura was looking at him. N O D V G Z J. So my next would be D V and I would do D B, which is this, and then B V, which is this, and then G Z G Z G Z. So G is this. And then Z is, BZ is that. And so we have one letter left. So if we just did the commutator for J, we, we wouldn't get a solved cube. So what we do instead is we actually use old Pachman for the last target. What you're technically supposed to do is use a parity algorithm, but I don't know those. So I just use old Pachman. So... You know in old Pachman, the algorithm switches these two. I swapped these two in memo, so you do a U2. 
and then you do J, but I know since I did the U2, J is actually over here now. So I would do U2, R, but it's J, but it's in the R location, so. Which is just Opakvin, undo the setup move, and it's solved. Um, that was probably really bad. Uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's what I do to solve Rubik's Cube blindfolded. This video is a little long, but... I tried to include everything. My explanations were probably pretty trash. Um, that's about it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.